Hi Paloma, how are you doing? I'm super happy to see you again. Coffee Thank time. Thank you very much for uh, coming to TEDx Luxembourg City presents Coffee With, and in this case, Paloma Castro. So thanks very much for taking the time. Do you have your coffee with you? I do, I do. I mean, like, you know, it seems I just read today that coffee uh, drinking in the whole of the world is going up because people need their caffeine fix. So your idea, as usual, has been really trend setting. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Although, do you know, I've uh, I've just organised another coffee with, but the chap David Goldrake, the magician. I think you remember him. Oh, he is. I that TED talk brought so much joy and so many good people into my life, right. and and even a magician. You know, yeah. who would have told me? <laughs> and in <laughs> fact, if, if we let our audience a little bit into behind the scenes. So I think David Goldrake even took his makeup kit out and helped you with the last minute. <laughs> it was just like one of those moments in which is desperate and then a magician says like, oh, and you can become pretty. And <laughs> <laughs> the magician said, yeah, abs absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I had an interview with him and he was saying that he refuses for it to be called coffee with because he never drinks coffee. He only ever drinks tea. So I had to rename it for his episode as Tea with David Goldrake. But, uh, I love I love all of that for magicians. They just probably like, mm, it's not even tea. It's a magic potion <laughs> that will allow you to be super clever. We like him. We like David very much. Oh, he's, he's, he's one of the kindest people. Um, but anyway, on, on to you. Um, so, so indeed, we ask you to come to TEDx Luxembourg City uh, to come and present what, what was special to you and your talk was was absolutely phenomenal and actually very personally it connected with my oldest daughter at a, to a level that no other ted talk has ever connected she she was so and and your talk was I'll, I'll link it underneath for those people that haven't seen it yet but your talk was all about embracing the chaos of discomfort and and allowing creativity to spawn and it, it's just so wonderful so I'd certainly recommend that as many people can, can see that as possible. So the link's there. Um, but so for those who haven't seen it, can I ask you maybe to present yourself and what you do? Okay, so basically like, it's true that you should have brought me to this coffee because if there is one thing that we're doing today is to embrace chaos as it is and storm the weather as well as we can. And you know, I was extremely lucky that one day you found me and you were interested on in seeing the point of view of a, I'm a Spaniard. I've been living and working all my life abroad, but still very rooted in my country. I'm a lawyer by training, and I think that that is what has given me a little bit of a structure of mind that has allowed me to work as a public affairs, lobbyist, a strategist, business developer in many areas. So I started with uh, McDonald's back in the times of Guess what? Mad cow disease, so yet another pandemic. Um, obesity. And then it was always a time in which I had to think creatively. And what it is thinking creatively, and it was my whole TED talk, it was about being curious. And I think that we are all exposed now to our loneliness that allows us to be even more curious because we are gathering information. And even watching a Netflix series is actually good. I just you bring in information into your system. The second thing is this curiosity needs to be tempered with a lot of determination. You cannot just like, oh, that is interesting. I'm going to put it here, there, but I'm not going to do anything with it. And then creativity, because every single situation in which your curiosity provides you with food for thought, you are determined to do it. You need to think a little bit differently. But everybody's doing it today. I mean, like, who would have told you during these times that you will have to manage yourself to get into, oops, I don't go to the office anymore, or oops, my children are here surrounding me. <laughs> so you becoming basically a coordinator of an orchestra that was not in your house. So creativity is, is, is the only solution. If you want to be happy, which is what ultimately, that was my whole talk about. It's like, and, in and, all those situations, you can And, and you've, been, you've been very, very good at taking that creativity into your jobs. And you mentioned you were working a little bit with McDonald's, and then you went on to, uh, to work with LVMH or with PayPal first, and, uh, and then LVMH, and then Lime for a little while. But you're on to a really interesting project now, which you told me about. And I thought, gosh, this is so obvious that this is needed to be developed. Do you, do you want to talk about what you're doing right now? 
Well, basically what happened is that you see my journey and my journey has allowed me to understand geopolitics first and so see what, what, what works and what doesn't work according to governments. It has allowed me to see as well how business develop internationally or not. And it took me naturally to be a business angel, a seed investor, a startup investor. And then, you know, I didn't make wrong decisions and I have not lost money, which is much more than usually happens with seed. We're not talking proper investment in terms of the stock exchange when things are settled. We're talking about the very early stages. And then I'm, when I was in line, I was for two years there and I was part of the uh, fundraising. So I really understood what is the, a successful startup looks like and what does it not look like. So uh, not only I got the framework to be a good investor, or well, at least one that is quite okay, but I got into understanding how does it work with the founders, with the vision, with the drive and the adrenaline. And so what was obvious to me throughout all this, let's say, embracing chaos career in which you have to go from one, let's say, movement and a moment in the industry that's going to take off or not, is why do we have certain business models? Uh, and if you look at the whole like financial supply chain, you see that at the end, today we have parity. Thank the Lord, we have had suffragettes, we have had women that have been fighting for the rights of women throughout many stages. But guess what? At the very beginning of that economic food chain, so where you put the money of the industries of tomorrow, only 2% of women. And I'm not saying that we're better, I'm not saying that we worse. I'm saying that there are many opportunities that you see here that will slip through because you yourself, Dirk, you will not see, you know, educational needs in, you know, later stages of women development, in, including like, you know, well-being issues like everybody talks now with quite open mind about menopause or what kind of, you know, health issues are included into a different life. All of that and money making opportunities that we are missing and that can develop as well what you would call social impact. And the most striking thing to me was that, in fact, women do not invest, that's why there's so little, not because they don't have the money, because being a seed investor, by the way, you don't need millions, huh? that's the beauty of it. Even with 3,000 euros, you can start investing. It's because they, they, they're scared and they say, I was like, oh, I don't have the knowledge. Oh, my priority should be like taking care of other things in the, ch in the household. You men are like, no, no, wow. I, I think this is cool. I'm going to put all my stamina in this project. And then you have people like Uber that develop like that, Lime, Deliveroo, Spotify. All of them have 98% of money that comes from men. Imagine all the opportunities and all the money that have not been put. So why I'm so excited, because this, this is even like more exciting because of coronavirus, it's like social impact, projects with a meaning, not just women projects, but all kinds of projects, but a point of view that would allow women to determine the future of the economy that they want for their children. So, so, what, so what you're doing right now then is you're encouraging women, so investors, um, so women investors, to um, to put money into very so just startups or so is it sort of like an incubator that that you're making or an accelerator because one of the things you said to me which really which really struck a chord and and something I, I will never forget you said why on earth are there so few women investors at the early stages when women were were born to be natural incubators and accelerators. I mean, women understand better than anybody what it is to give birth to something and to raise it. And so, of course, so, so what you're doing right now is you're encouraging women to invest and not just in women projects, but in any projects, in all forms of startups. Absolutely, I mean, like, it's not women investors, it's any women. Because the problem with women is that they're not natural born investors. They're natural born mothers and encouragers and the developers. But they, they, they have this situation in which women do not feel comfortable putting money at early stages. But again, to your point, the, those are, is the women that actually take the risk to bring children to this world. So it's such a natural thing to do. So what I'm doing very concretely is making a movement what I call the 
economic feminism of early stages in which with the money that you spent in a bag, you can put it in a startup. It's, wow. it's not complicated. It's little money. You will never put money on a startup that if you lose it, you will freak out. But everybody can do it. It's e not about money. Economic feminism. I, I, I love that term. That's, that's really good. So, so in doing that, um, and I know you've been busy doing that around a year, is that right? No, 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 no. And basically I was, I was asked by a accelerator of, of, of startups, which is quite unique, called The Family in, in France, to be their voice for the raising the investors' women. Uh, ratio because they found that I was quite an unusual investor myself. I don't have a financial background, as I explained. I do have a common sense, intuitive and creative background, and that allows me to be non-complex. I'm like, you know, all right, no, no, okay, fine. Due diligence, I will look at it. Yeah. But talk to the founders, see the ideas, see the market, and if you're excited, it's like raising a child. Sometimes you're really within, then, then you give distance and they get emotional and it's just very all um, upside and down. And it allows you to be part of the world in a way that you could not even imagine. That's, that's so it's, very, it's, it's, very, it's very rewarding. And so ideally, this feminism, this, 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 this economic and financial feminism will bring, if we get 15% women investors on seat, the world of investment and the new economy will change completely. Yeah, absolutely. And there have been some incredible TED Talks about women's perception of the economy and not what it is, but what it should be. Um, so, and I'd certainly recommend people to, to see those. But if, if I can just return to this, how have things changed now since, since the coronavirus has, has hit, this pandemic has, has, uh, has broken out? What what's changed for you in in what you do? Right, I think I'm I'm, I'm not gonna go to common places. Everybody is much more um, detached from um, the social renderings, and that allows you to be a little bit more centered, but at the same time to be uh, not human, because humans are interacting, uh, you know, beings. So what has changed is that the external uh, influx of what drives me, which is this curiosity. Now it's much more channeled. So I would say that there are three things coming out um, of this pandemic that are facts. And I'm not gonna challenge them. I'm just going to live with them. One is the state has become much more powerful. And we have given back power to the state, which will mean for business like investment, you will have to really play a much more protectionist game, meaning the companies that you will be like looking at will be much more restrained to geographical zones because the governments will be like encouraging that. And because they will, you will have to play with them in a much more um, present place. Second, uh, what you would call the power of the digital players, omnipotent, is even more clear. Even now, the tracking systems that are going to be put into place, and in Paris, where I'm now, it's just obvious that uh, there's much more intervention. Um, the fact that, you know, you have seen that there is like even agreements between Google and Apple, those players have a role to transparency and governance that become in public utilities. And if they are not public utilities, we will be in trouble. And that is as well for the kind of means I'm going to use. I mean, I'm empowering women to become feminists through finance, but I'm going to have to use Google, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter. And it's very interesting as well to see how the positioning of those players is, is, is you know, in the public space. Have you seen what Dorsey, the, the boss of Twitter, has been pledging? for the economy, one billion, versus the others and what, how they are playing and the responsibility and the elections to come. So that's the second thing. And the third thing I think is interesting to me is that we are all clearly, uh, slightly taken aback by the economy that we have created. And that goes back to digital uh, tech companies and seed investment, like early stages. The gig economy is great, but when something happens, 
and you are a person that is self-employed and not covered, it's not great. So that's one thing that is, you know, will you invest in companies in which the guys are not totally covered? Second, people are much more aware about social impact. And that's where women come in. Women are like obsessed with social impact. And why is that? Because basically almost all of us, we household, you know, you, you know, uh, and, and, and the people that know me, I don't have children, but I'm obsessed with the well-being of the people that I've been programmed, the well-being of the people that are around me. So social impact, public health, uh, research and development, education, fair countries, fair countries, what, fair countries growth. There will be one day we will not have any more money to give to third countries to help them to get out of, of a dire straits. That if you give them education, right, right, that's right, right. So, so it's fantastic because you have an, a strong state. Everything is, let's say, much more given to the digital players. So they have to have public utilities, liability, responsibility. But third, the behavior of the market is going to go into places where education, social impact, environmental places, research and development are going to be much more preferred by the small investors. And that's where we're playing. So I think it's, it's very interesting times. So the, the first two points that you make, I, I've heard a number of people talk about how that's quite a scary thing. The fact that so much power is being handed over to the government and everybody's very willing to do it now because of the circumstances mm -hmm. we're in. Um, the fact that you do have this cooperation between Google and, and Apple or, or Alphabet and Apple where they're, these are two of the biggest companies in the world that are, that are in essence tracking us. And I think it's really interesting that you say that they're going to be monitored more significantly as a utility company. And I think that's, uh, that, that's a really interesting perspective. Is this something that excites you or is this something that scares you? Because I've really heard uh, both sides of that story recently. I mean, like go back to embracing chaos. This is, we could not be in more interesting time. Right. This is fascinating. Imagine that finally we get a state that has the tools to allocate the resources where it should be instead of just having to be dependent on the flavor of the day or be stopped by you know a campaign that let's say let's be honest it's not that relevant but it's going to stop them from doing the right, right. second imagine if finally we can all come to an agreement that all right you are public utilities you have a liability so I reckon that the conditions are there for people to do the right thing, but it's like for all of us, and I'm talking all of us, we can make a difference. So if you are upset about the way the big digital players behave, show it. I mean, Instagram is a brilliant place. Facebook is a brilliant place to make a riot. Right. So why do we have to endure when we have the tools to be the right people and, and you know i think that what you're doing with tech talk it shows it i mean you took you took your own lesson in your hands right and it's it's difficult it's struggling but it's not killing you right it's making you happy in a right. sense right so Absolutely. what i reckon is that ultimately i mean like you know it's, it's this if there were to be one thing out of this COVID thing is it allows us a little bit, and I'm saying you that I'm suffering from not touching and, you know, embracing you and like, you know, telling you my life because I'm very much of a touchy person, is um, the conditions are there. We all know them. We are um, shocked and perplexed that we have been able to stop and we never thought about it. Be be happy about what is going to happen like and enjoy the ride it's, it's fascinating en enjoy the ride i absolutely love that and you are such an optimistic person as well which really came across um during well, during the time that i've met you and since your ted talk and in your ted talk and i think that's just lovely that's a lovely thing to to take forward Paloma, I'd like to thank you very, very much um, for doing this Coffee With uh, series. And, um, and, and again, I think, you know, 
enjoy the ride. It's all new for everybody. Uh, I think what a wonderful thing to finish on. Ploma, thank right. you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.